ABC News medical contributor and Stanford Children's Health physician, Dr. Alok Patel, joining us now to talk more about this. So, Alok, this news comes after growing calls, as you know, from a lot of frustrated parents. Also, two missed deadlines to release data on this COVID shot for this age group. So, what else do we know about this study? And also, of course, the safety, the safety aspect and the efficacy of it. Well, good morning, Kira. This news is being met by cheers, uh, primarily among the parents of the nearly 30 million children in this age group, especially those who are high risk. Kira, off the bat, what we know is that that efficacy is about 51% for kids six months to two years, and a little bit lower than that, 37%. But there's an asterisk there, Kira, because that's talking about just symptomatic cases of COVID-19. It could simply be a cough counting in that as well. And this was also during the Omicron surge. If we look at a two-dose regimen for adults, that efficacy might be similar to what we saw during Omicron, but we've known from previous studies like this one that a high antibody level in children does correlate very well to preventing severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths, which is exactly what we want for our kids. So this is welcome news across the board. You mentioned safety study. The safety profile of this result looked really good, including zero cases of myocarditis, which is a central worry about parents when I talk to them about the effects from the vaccine. Right, and impacting the heart. So the vaccine will, will push us one step closer to herd immunity, right? So some health experts have actually criticized the low efficacy numbers against infection. So what exactly do parents need to understand here? I think herd immunity has now turned into kind of a moving target because we once talked about herd immunity being a time when we could block any transmission of COVID-19. And that might not be what we're looking at right now. What we're looking at is making sure as we reopen and say that we're entering a new normal, that parents out there can be even more reassured that their kids will be protected against severe illness. So I think that is what parents need to understand. We have seen in the group eligible five to 12 years old, only about 30% of that group has gotten vaccines. There's a lot of hesitancy out there, Kira, a lot of misinformation and parents worried about these very rare side effects. I think now is a moment to realign what the goals of vaccine are, what the transparency is in terms of the side effects and make sure instead of just shouting all this information at parents, we also take a minute to listen, to truly hear what those concerns are and address them individually, locally, and to make sure that parents really know what they're doing when they give these kids their vaccines. They're preventing hospitalizations and or severe illness. So do you think these children will need an additional booster at some point? I think it's entirely possible. And we've seen, this is not a, that's not a surprise though. We've heard that being talked about with regards to Moderna and also Pfizer will be submitting data for their booster shot in this age group later in June. We've also heard these talks about what could potentially happen in fall. I think that's something that we should all be expected about. And it's a reminder that this vaccine that Moderna is releasing data for is not an Omicron specific vaccine. It's not a variant specific vaccine. We may need one of those in fall, but we're talking about right now as cases are continuing to rise, as our hospitalizations, schools are open, masks are off. We need to get that baseline level of protection to every age group. And also, you know, we just heard Anthony Fauci, as you know, say that the country is out of the pandemic phase. It's kind of hard to understand what exactly that means, right? But then it was clarified that hospitalizations and deaths are not at the levels they once were. So some experts say no one should still be dying from COVID-19 with all these treatments that are now available. So how concerned should we be about this? And, and can you help us even parse through bottom line, what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kira, I think the deal is that we're trying to shine a little bit of optimism on the fact that we have greatly decreased the amount of severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. But as you pointed out, we should not be normalizing over 300 American deaths a day right now when vaccines and treatments are available. And that is something that needs to be looked at. We need to make sure that number doesn't get any higher, which is why there's so much discussion about widespread, widespread availability of medications like Paxlovid and improving the education so people know what to do to keep themselves safe. And that's why, again, we are cheering over this, this welcome news about there being data available for a vaccine for these young kids. Because as we talk about transitioning, we need to make sure we're doing that for everyone out there, including the immunocompromised and parents. So when we say a new normal, we understand there's a new normal for everyone. And let me just add, my rambunctious one-year-old will be in line to get this vaccine when it's available. <laughs> She's With already telling you that. In line by herself. <laughs> Yeah, right. Knowing your child, she will be right up there doing it herself at the she age of be. one. I can see her with her fist in the air saying vaccines work. 
<laughs> Dr. Alok Patel, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.